Hey, hello, you are watching precentrals.net coverage of the Palm Pre, and we are going to do a quick hardware overview, and then we're going to compare it to a bunch of phones. And so here it is, the Pre hardware, and as you can see, they, they call it a Riverstone, and boy, it feels like it. It's got some nice curve to it, really uh, offsets the thickness, and uh, there's a slide out with the keyboard. They call it a Riverstone, and when it's closed, boy, it feels like it. It just feels incredibly good in the hand. Up at the top, we've got our speaker, of course, our earpiece. Down at the bottom, we have our center button and a microphone hole. And then down on the very bottom, we've got nothing but a little tab, a little button to push to remove the battery door. And take a look at our touchstone video for more details on that because it's kind of complicated. Over on the right side, we have the, uh, the door to cover the micro USB port. This is used for charging and also for power. And you can see me fiddling around with the door there. I'm not a fan. I don't like uh, those doors. I, I know that it makes it nice and clean when it's closed, but it's sort of a hassle to deal with. On the top, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, a ringer switch, of course, and a power button. And I'll talk about that ringer switch in a bit it, um, in a different video because it's not the same as previous Trio ringer switches. And then uh, I want to point out when you plug in a 3.5 jack there, the you're going to have part of it exposed, so don't freak out. It doesn't, it's, since it's curved, it doesn't plug all the way in. You also want to make sure that your uh, your headphones aren't too fat when they plug in because you might not be able to slide up the pre if they are. So just be aware. Over on the left, we've got our volume buttons, and um, that's about it there. On the back, we've got our, our glossy finish, our speakerphone hole, our uh, three megapixel camera, and our flash. Okay, well, let's take a closer look at the keyboard. Oh, there's a mirror on the back, too. There I am. Very nice that the, that's only visible when it slides out. Okay, like I said, let's take a look at the keyboard because that's one of the big questions. It is actually surprisingly large and uh, surprisingly good. The keys are fairly well domed. They're also pretty sticky. If you used a Trio Pro or a Centro, it's very similar. Uh, it's a little bit, I'd say it's in between those in terms of hardness. Not as hard as a Trio Pro, a little bit, uh, you know, harder than a Centro. And I can type on it pretty well, although I do need to angle my thumb so it hits it straight on. If I try and hit it with my flat, it doesn't work. Uh, very well, but I can type on it pretty good, especially since I've got experience with those other phones. All in all, I'm pretty impressed. Now, the phone we got to compare it to, of course, is the iPhone 3G, and here it is. And you can see the Pre just is a ton smaller. It is a uh, shorter. It is not as wide. They both have the same screen size, 480 by 320, but the the Pre screen is much much smaller. It's a uh, 3.1 inches diagonally, and uh, you know. For practical purposes, it means the text is going to be a little bit smaller, but it also means that images and video especially look a lot sharper on it because it has such higher pixel density. Uh, it's also a bit thicker than the iPhone, worth pointing out, and uh, there you go with your keyboard with it slid open. It is, of course, a bit taller than the iPhone. Now, you know, it's funny to me. They actually both have the exact same number of buttons. They both got a center button. They've got volume buttons. They've got a power switch. 3.5 jack, of course, and then a ringer switch in different places. So, yeah, exact same number of buttons on both devices, which is uh, pretty hilarious to me. And uh, the Pre also has a, a camera where or a flash, whereas the iPhone doesn't. We're going to do a full head to head between the Pre and the iPhone 3.0 and the Pre and the iPhone 2.0. So keep it tuned to precentral.net to, uh, to see more comparisons between the two of these phones in their actual operation. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, one last look at the iPhone, and let's compare it to the Trio Pro, the uh, other device in the uh, Palm family. This is the uh, unlocked GSM version, identical to the Sprint version. And as you can see, the Pre is much, much shorter and uh, about the same width. Uh, the Pre is a little bit thicker than the Trio Pro. Uh, and <laughs> looking at the back, you can really see they're in uh, the same device family. A lot of similar uh, aesthetic stylings there. Um, now the keyboards, if you compare them, the Pre's keyboard has got a nice smile to it, whereas the Trio Pro is straight across. Um, and the keys are more domed on the Pre, so they feel a little bit more separated than they do in the Trio Pro. So I actually uh, put these two about equal. Uh, the difference being, whereas on the uh, the Pre I need to push straight in, on the Trio Pro I can hit the top row a little bit more easily because I can hit it with more of the flat of my thumb instead of just the tip like I need to do on the Palm Pre. But uh, overall, I do slightly prefer the Pre's keyboard to the Trio Pros. Uh, another Palm device we ought to compare it to is the Centro. This is the AT&T, but of course it's identical on all the networks it's available on. And again, man, that Pre is just so small. It is even shorter than a Centro, and it's also thinner than a Centro. If you're thinking about moving up from a Centro to a Pre, I highly endorse that move. Uh, you can see here, comparing it uh, on all sides, it's a little bit wider than a Centro, of course, uh, but thinner and shorter, you know, more than makes up for that extra width. I actually prefer the extra width. And uh, keyboard, 
Now here again, uh, you've got very similar keyboards. I much prefer the keyboard on the Pre to the keyboard on the Centro because it has uh, extra width, a little bit of extra spacing between the keys, and it's not quite as uh, rubbery or sticky as the, uh, the Centro's keyboard. Although again, the Centro is slightly easier to type on that top row. And let's compare it to one more. Here's the Trio 680, uh, very similar to, say, the Trio 755P on Sprint. And it's, there's just no contest. I mean, the 680 is, a, you know, pretty old, but the Pre is just, it's thinner, it's shorter, about the same width, um, but much bigger screen and obviously much nicer overall hardware-wise. And keyboards, boy, they are a spitting image of each other if you didn't count the, um, the, the, the finish on the Pre's keyboard, excuse me. They both got that smile to them. They're about the same width. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, another phone I want to compare it to is a Windows mobile phone. This is the Touch Diamond on Sprint. A lot of folks on Sprint are going to be wanting to move from the Touch Diamond to the Pre. Pre is slightly thinner than the Touch Diamond and slightly wider, um, but uh, they they feel very similar just in the hand because they're they're so close to each other in size. Uh, but the Pre, of course, has a physical keyboard, whereas the Touch Diamond does not. And lastly, we're going to compare it to the G1 on T-Mobile, their flagship device. It is obviously much, much smaller overall. Thinner, shorter, about the same width, uh, but, you know, we got a keyboard there compared to the keyboard here. All right, just want to do a quick hardware overview and some device comparisons. Obviously, we've got much more in-depth stuff on the Palm Pre software and hardware, so stay tuned to PreCentral.net.